Welcome back everybody and thank you for tuning into this week's episode here at Mobile Outdoor. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at some pieces that I found just a few days ago. We will also be cleaning them and hopefully identifying a few of these mystery finds along with just looking at some really cool pieces. The rocks we are going to be looking at today actually come from a landscaping rock pile that was sitting on one of my friend's dad's property. He was kind enough to give me permission to look through and take a handful of goodies and I'm pretty excited about what we were able to find. One of the first pieces I wanted to check out was this nice piece of chert that my friend actually picked up. Two of the reasons why I like this piece so much is one, it has a little bit of translucence to it when you hold it up to the sun, and two, it actually has some crinoid fragments right there as you can see, which is pretty neat. One of the next big pieces is this basic limestone rock with some nice dendritic crystals on the surface. So that is super neat. I can't wait till we clean that up. Those crystals will probably come in really clear then. Up next, we have this really cool favazite coral. This was the first fossil I found there that day. And usually when you find one of these, you know it's gonna be a decent day. And it definitely was. Now one of the last pieces we'll take a look at before we move on to the cleaning process is this nice sedimentary rock. And the reason why I wanted to point this out specifically is because if you've ever followed Nick from City Rock Hunting, he finds a lot of this stuff he likes to call railroad chert. And I'm thinking this might be an example of that. So that would be pretty neat to have found something similar in a totally different area. Not to mention everything here is still super dusty, so who knows what kind of details we'll be hiding underneath all this dirt. So, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the cleaning process before we finish looking at everything. And I have a pretty good feeling there's gonna be a lot more to discover. So, let's just jump right into it and see what we can find out clean these rocks, we aren't doing anything too crazy. We just have ourselves a bowl full of lukewarm water with a soft bristle toothbrush. We're basically removing dust from the surface of these rocks as we scrub it. We aren't doing anything too aggressive right now. So here is a better look at that limestone rock with the dendritic crystals on it. Like I was saying in the beginning when we cleaned it off, I was hoping that the dendritic crystals would come through better. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that they're in the best of condition. I mean, you can kind of see some nice ones right there. and even a few in that corner there. But by and large, they only look good from about this distance. Funny enough, this is actually a fairly good example of how dendritic crystals form, because as you may or may not know, dendritic crystals form when you have magnesium rich or iron rich water seeping through the cracks in the limestone, and then the water kind of evaporates, leaving behind these mineral deposits. Still a pretty interesting piece we have here. As you can even see, the ones right here actually don't look half bad.
This next track I want to take a look at is still a little bit of a mystery, although I'm sure you can see why it caught my attention. Here we have what appears to be a rock inside of a rock. Now I believe the outer rock to be some sort of sandstone because it does feel rather soft on the fingertips and I'm not sure what the smaller piece would be although I believe it to be some type of fossil so maybe there's a bit more research to be done on this piece and maybe at some point even a prep but we are a little ways from that because if I were to do a piece like this I'd want a finer tool like a Dremel or some people call it a rotary tool either way this piece looks super neat and it definitely has some character. So as of right now I'm referring to these next two rocks as cool sedimentary rocks. And the piece I'm holding currently I talked a little bit about in the beginning referring to them as possible railroad chert like Nick from City Rock Hunting finds but after cleaning them up I'm not so sure they are I mean they definitely do look like chert they have that nice waxy appearance especially the second one down here but they just don't have the same banding that you see in some of the pieces that he finds either way these guys are still pretty cool, and uh, yeah, I'll be talking to Nick in the future, the near future I should say, and kind of gathering his thoughts on these pieces, and see what we can do from there. So this next fossil is a little bit of a mystery, but I believe I've come close, if not all the way to solving it. And that is by identifying it as a trace fossil known as Scolithos. And I'm pretty sure I just butchered that name. So let's go grab our book real quick and take a closer look at what I'm talking about. As we flip to what I want to talk a little bit more about, You'll notice right here, we have a nice picture of this fossil known as Scoliathos. And I still don't know if I pronounce that right, but I'm a little bit more confident in it. And this is under the trace fossil section. And if we wanted a little bit more information, we could even flip to page 732 to get a little bit more detailed information about it. Looking on the left side, you'll start to read that they believe these soft-bodied, worm-like creatures actually burrowed in the soft, sandy sediments to avoid being washed out by the tide, which is actually pretty interesting. So... Like I was saying, I'm not 100% sure on this ID, but I'm about 90% sure that this is what it would be. Even if it turns out not to be what I suspect, we will still be keeping our eyes peeled this year for possible trace fossils, which is exciting in of itself. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. To finish out this video, I'm just going to throw some music on in the background and take a good look at the rest of the pieces we have yet to see. There's even a few surprise pieces in there that are super awesome just because I wasn't sure if I was going to show them in this video or do something different with them. But I ended up deciding to throw it all in one video just to keep it all together. Anyway, I'm ranting. So without further ado, here are those awesome pieces, and until next time, stay safe and rock on.
So to bring it home, I wanted to verbally explain this rock because at first glance, it doesn't seem like much of anything. You know, it looks like there's some quartz on it, maybe some calcite if we're lucky. It's gonna be really sparkly at best. But after I cleaned everything up and looked at it a little bit closer, you start to realize some structure in there. And then you get a little bit closer and that looks an awful lot like coral structure. Let me see if I can find a good face. There is a really good view. Wow, this, this is just crazy. Which is why I kind of wanted to verbally explain it. It's easier to do that than to put a text box in because that would be one big text box. Wow, look at that. That's insane.